Hi everyone, welcome to Observability Day Europe 2023. The topic we have today is Scaling Observability Stack for AOps. I am Ravi Hari, I work at Intuit as a Principal Software Engineer. About Intuit briefly, uh, Intuit was founded in 1983 and it went to IPO in 93. We have about 19 locations and I work from Bangalore office. Uh, we have uh, about 12.7 billion revenue uh, last year. And uh, we have more than 100 plus million customers, and uh, we contribute into multiple open source projects. Coming to the topic, uh, briefly, Prometheus metrics are used uh, for various purposes, and Prometheus being a de facto standard in Kubernetes, uh, it can be leveraged uh, for various uh, use cases. For example, monitoring time series data, alerting, Auto scaling and anomaly detection are common use cases for Prometheus metrics. The problem that we had to solve was uh, we wanted to generate anomaly scores uh, using AI ops tool, uh, leveraging Prometheus metrics data. And uh, the thing is that Prometheus metric that uh, the Prometheus instances collect, it is good for a few of it, but if we cannot store that data in Prometheus instances, for uh, days to And Prometheus also does a lot of other things like scraping, remote writing, and it also allows for querying. Because of this, we cannot retrieve that data with long-term storage directly from Prometheus. We had to choose other components. So we, we looked at all the solutions and we felt Thanos is a great fit with Prometheus and uh, we started integrating Prometheus with Thanos to scale horizontally. Thanos has a number of components like Thanos query, store, sidecar, ruler, etc. And one thing that uh, actually we like was Thanos sidecar uh, with the help of uh, it running along with uh, Prometheus, we can write the data of Prometheus DSDB into S3 buckets. So this is high level uh, architecture of Thanos where the Thanos sidecar runs along with the Prometheus instances. And uh, the shipper component of the Thanos sidecar writes the TSDB blocks into object storage, uh, S3 bucket in our case. And Thanos query can be used to query the data using Thanos uh, store as a gateway. And it re Thanos store retrieves the data from S3 bucket and passes it on to query, which can be leveraged by the clients. Additional components like ruler and contact uh, would be uh, helpful. Uh, contact will be useful to contact the data. Uh, in object storage, ruler can be used for aggregating the rules if you have multiple communication plans so that uh, uh, we get consolidated uh, when, when we use the rules. So, so we thought we use AWS S3 bucket to store the data, and uh, we chose about eight bits of data would be uh, a good uh, historical uh, uh, data to query and uh, run some anomaly detection on top of that metrics for, for a given uh, use case, right? And uh, retrieving this data from Thanos store, we pass it on to Thanos query as we have seen. So this architecture essentially looks like this for, for which we have initially enabled, right? So for querying the live metrics, we went directly uh, to Prometheus. We didn't have too much traffic on this side, but we were anticipating more traffic coming towards the uh, Thanos uh, long-term storage metrics because we wanted to run this anomaly course and all the new spaces on a given cluster. And uh, this is the path the where it queries the Thanos query S3 service. Uh, and uh, that uh, calls this Thanos query three pods because we are, they are getting retrieved from S3, we're just knowing it as S3 here. And uh, this Thanos query S3 pods retrieve the data from Thanos store. Thanos store is a staple set and that can also be horizontally scaled. And they call the S3 buckets and they retrieve the data from S3, right? So that is a current uh, model uh, we, have, we have implemented it. And uh, we have seen a number of challenges. This is the first challenge that we have seen, right? Uh, we thought everything would work with the previous architecture, but um, uh, this was working only for the add-on namespaces or namespaces where we run the Kubernetes controllers, but uh, it is not working for us in the application workspaces. The reason for that is, our application namespaces have high security uh, guardrails, and because of which we have network policies that uh, we put in place so that no two application services can contact each other, right? So we cannot query uh, a service uh, from an application namespace 
into either an add-on namespace or any other uh, namespace as such, right? Then how can we query this data from, uh, to run it from the AFs pipeline in the namespaces, right? Then we thought uh, of a solution called internal ALP, which we can put in place in front of this uh, Thanos query S3 service. Then uh, the application namespace, which is running this AOPS pipeline, can query the internal ALP to retrieve the data that eventually can call the Thanos query S3 and uh, store the trace of data from S3 bucket. So this, this pipeline can work is what uh, we figured out. And we thought this, this will uh, solve all our problems. Uh, then we started running uh, into other issues. The second issue that we ran is once we started load testing it, we found that uh, in Thanos query, uh, there is errors coming up uh, quite frequently, and we are also seeing uh, errors on the clients, uh, right? Uh, and the uh, error that we saw in the Thanos uh, query uh, is the chunk pool uh, getting exhausted. And we thought initially this is a Thanos query problem, but later we realized this is essentially a problem coming from Thanos store. And uh, when we looked into what are the possible options for us to configure with Thanos store, uh, we came across two critical options in Thanos store. One is the chunk pool size configuration, and the other one is index cache size configuration. Uh, uh, so the chunk pool size configuration we started uh, playing around uh, by giving different sizes for it. Uh, and even when we gave around 30 GB for this chunk pool size, it was not sufficient. We were running out of it uh, when we had uh, run, uh, you know, a high volume load test. Then uh, we thought uh, we need to keep this minimal because otherwise the Thanos stored parts are going to have very huge amount of memory. Uh, so, so we optimize it in a later phase will come to that. Uh, the other thing that we also found beneficial is index cache size. So this keeps uh, the index uh, data that uh, gets stored in the uh, PSDB blocks, uh, which has the information of uh, where the chunks are stored in S3 bucket and other things, right? So, uh, so by enabling this, uh, it will optimize uh, the speed um, uh, to fetch the chunk data uh, that is stored in S3 bucket. Uh, and it has, doesn't have to retrieve this index file uh, any time because it is stored in that image. So these two options uh, help us uh, alleviate the chunk pool exhaustion problem that we were seeing in the Thanos. Now, after that, we found another issue that uh, the ALPs uh, are getting 504 uh, gateway timeouts. And uh, uh, we were running the load test initially, we didn't see this, but at, after a certain point of time, after we fixed the chunk pool size configurations and stuff like that, uh, we saw that uh, the ALPs are uh, giving this uh, 504 gateway uh, timeout errors, and we looked into the access path to figure out that the ALPs are getting uh, timed out. So there is this configuration in ALB called idle timeout. By default, it is set to 60 seconds. But because we are querying eight days of data, uh, the amount of time taken to retrieve the data from SC bucket and pass it on uh, back to ALP is taking more than 60 seconds on the load. So which is why we are not able to uh, uh, get the metric uh, metrics data back. And that connection is getting terminated. Uh, for 60 seconds, and we were getting 504. So the fix for this is we had to increase the idle timeout on ALB, uh, and then we were not seeing the 504 uh, gateway timeout errors. Then we thought we are set, and we ran into another problem. And this problem is 502 bad gateways on ALB. And uh, the reason for this uh, is we thought it has to do with some timeout settings and other things, but later we found that as we started increasing the load, uh, the Thanos store memory is getting exhausted uh, quite fast. And at the same time, the memory from the node is also getting uh, exhausted and reaching 100% quite fast. And uh, then this Thanos store, as it is not becoming accessible, and uh, Thanos uh, query S3, when it is trying to query Thanos store, it is getting a connection to this error. So uh, with Thanos query uh, getting connection to this error, the ALB uh, is giving us a 502 uh, bad gateway. Then we thought, hey, whatever we are doing is not right because we are querying too much of data and uh, that is overwhelming the Thanos store. And we need to somehow reduce the amount of data that we can query at once from Thanos store so we can limit the memory on the Thanos queries, these stores, right? So as we discussed, we saw the 100% usage on the nodes and CPU uh, on Thanos store, CPU and memory on Thanos are getting spiked immediately. Uh, we looked at a uh, couple of alternators. And uh, 
the solution for this uh, problem is we found how can we reduce the size uh, of uh, the data that we can retrieve. Uh, we thought of implementing our own solution, but we later found that there is already a well thought out solution for this called Thanos Query Frontend. And uh, this provides us an option to split the query range uh, uh, with the split interval flag. And uh, there we tried it on different combinations during the Lotus and we felt to us as a decent uh, 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 query uh, split interval with which uh, we can limit the amount of memory that Thanos store consumes and Thanos memory consumes. Because otherwise, if you don't have this, and we query Thanos query, even if Thanos store sometimes performs well, Thanos query will run out of memory. So uh, this one actually protects both Thanos query and Thanos store uh, to retrieve uh, the information, right? So this is our final solution. So the the pipeline that runs in application applications queries the internal ALB, which queries the Thanos query front end, which can horizontally scale. That internally queries the Thanos query uh, uh, you know, service, which uh, can also horizontally scale, which queries Thanos store, which actually retrieves the data from S3 bucket, and that can also horizontally scale. Now, with all this, we ran in load tests and we didn't see any error after that. Uh, and, uh, you know, we saw that net 99 percentile, the response time is around 65 seconds, and on average, it's around 30 seconds. And these are the results on the back end, where we saw that uh, uh, the Thanos query, S3 CPU, and memory are uh, in control, as well as the Thanos store uh, query and uh, memory and CPU are also in control. And uh, we also saw that uh, the HPA is getting kicked in at the right intervals, and uh, these components can also scale, and uh, the node memory search and CPU uh, are also uh, really dependent. The next thing, once we have this uh, thing running into it, right, uh, the next big thing is how much does this cost for us, right, to have this solution? And when we looked into uh, the components that are involved in this, there are three components. One is ALB, the second one is uh, nodes, the third one is S3 bucket. So first looking at the ALB cost, uh, the ALBs are getting charged based on the uh, LCUs, which is nothing but load balance of capacity units. And uh, in our load test, based on all the information that we have, uh, when we look into the amount of cost that gets charged, uh, we, we query based on a, uh, a load profile at the peak, we query about 35 GB per hour. And uh, we have about 30 concurrent requests per second and stuff like that, or 30 concurrent that we create against the ALB. Uh, per second, and based on all this, we saw that ALB is going to charge about $204 per month, which is not bad. And uh, then we looked at the node usage, right? And uh, how many nodes should be uh, uh, based on the instance type uh, or the number of nodes were changing. We started with asset which like, but as we saw the uh, uh, we saw initially the memory was going to close and we had other instance of R5 series because they are very optimized. But later, as you, as you were able to control the query range to do as with the split interval, um, then we realized that it's no more a memory bound problem. It's essentially a compute problem. So we chose, uh, we went with uh, C5 uh, instances. And with the C5 instances, uh, uh, when we looked into the on-demand instances, it was costing a little higher. Uh, but when we chose the reserved instances, uh, the cost seems to be uh, decent with even as to its uh, of other of instances. So overall cost that uh, we felt with the C5-4X lab uh, instance time is around 1460 uh, US dollars. And then the last thing is AWS S3 bucket cost. AWS S3 buckets uh, are, are charged based on the amount of data that we store in them and the amount of data that we retrieve out of it and the scan if it does to retrieve that uh, data, right? And uh, by feeding in all our uh, information based on our uh, projections and device estimates, uh, we uh, finally, I have that about putting away for the dollars uh, per month approximately. Right? Um, so overall cost based on the projection, it comes to about $3,100. This is a good insight for us. Now we can look into whether is this what for us to kind of um, you know, uh, build our own solution or look at any alternatives that provide us um, uh, out of the box solutions. But this seems to be much more optimal than uh, going for any, uh, uh, you know, paid tools and stuff like that. That is all our learnings uh, in scaling uh, Thanos to retrieve longer term uh, data for metrics uh, that are generated uh, from Thanos. Thank you.